Now, all right, well, now we're on video. So there we go, we got Chris, Greg, and Father Brian. Got the kayaks, got the van, got the place we're gonna come out. We're on an historic flow of 19.1 feet, major flood stage, 152,000 cubic feet of water, 68 million gallons per minute. It would fill up all the water capacity in Bismarck in 20 seconds, every, se every minute going by here. Every 20 seconds, it would fill up 22 million gallons of the storage capacity of Bismarck. Wow, I dispute those numbers. No, I already, I already made it as a fact on my Facebook page, so I know they're right. Pretty amazing, huh? That's the Yellowstone replica of a boat's used to dock right there. Oh, really? Yep. You're from Bismarck, aren't you? Yeah. You don't know this stuff? Well, I went to Bismarck High. Oh, that explains it. Okay, Chris, too, yeah. Yeah. You went to St. Mary's, you don't know this stuff either. I know all about this. Okay, okay. See, he knew about it. Okay. He built this one of the volunteer projects. All right, let's roll. All right. Video here. We are at the put-in place, which is where I came up uh, last time about four weeks ago. We did the 85,000 CFS flow. We put in over here, but now there's significantly more water. The Misty Waters Marina, the Eiffel boat landing in the distance, and uh, we're here with Father Brian and Greg and Chris. We got the kayaks literally on the road here. This is Burnt Cro Creek Loop Road which is closed, you can get down, you have to go through a couple places here where there's water, like where we are. So we really, we really have our kayaks on the road where we're starting from, and we're gonna go down to where we just saw the previous video. What's that noise? It's gotta be the docks sliding on their poles or something. Oh, weird. So we're here in the uh, Misty Water Bays where normally this is full of boats, but there are no boats because uh, in pontoons, because simply uh, this has been flooded now for over a month, the access here has been lost. And a once thriving marina in July is empty and millions of dollars in lost revenue because of that. And this, uh, this of course, shop owner here at Tesoro is uh, completely ruined for the summer and who knows if he'll ever recover. Coming into the Misty Waters Bridge, that was a former docking area for boats, and you can see the bridge, how low it is. An entire pontoon boat could fit under it. We're barely going to get under it. We will fit under it as we uh, approach it here. Battle is through, Father. Stay left, part hard paddle left. Yeah. Yeah, if we got any higher, you couldn't get through here. Now there's the Nifel boat landing parking lot area in front of that Nifel park. You can see the outhouse halfway in the water there. And we're coming back out on the bridge over here on the other side. Wow, we're, we're not going to be able to get through that for a while. And the water's still pouring into the Misty Water Harbor. You can see the, uh, the, the water coming into the Misty Water Harbor over what used to be the Nifel boat dock. Okay, we just came out of Misty Waters. There's the top of the outhouse at Nifel boat landing. In the distance you can see the uh, Tesoro. And this is, we're literally over the top of the landing right now. And there was a sign that was here when we were here uh, a few weeks ago and now it's gone, the Heskett plant across there, and then the Tesoro refinery, and now we're heading south towards the north end of Christmas Tree Island. We see some debris along the embankment here. This used to be a popular fishing spot. In fact, a camping spot here. Some people would come down here and camp as well. And we're continuing to head south. This is the embankment we came down three weeks ago, and you could see some houses on the other side here. We, we Chris went down in the water here, but it's uh, it's too fast through here. It's actually cold and fast, and this part of the sandbar has broached off. But surprisingly, this part of the sandbar is still here, and uh, it's it's quite amazing that uh, we're we're speculating. Don't know, but uh, this this is a really old sandbar because the sand is still here a long time later. We're at 152,000 flow, 19.2 feet on July 2nd. And where we docked before, there's still sand here, north of Christmas Tree Island. 
quite a large area of sand actually. We're standing on the uh, sandbar just north of Christmas Tree Island and we're looking at some houses that would be down on Sandy River Drive. You can see one there, uh, one here that's got a little earthen dike that seems to be keeping the water off. And there's a couple more down through the trees. This is where we were standing back on May 30th. And we actually could walk all the way out to the point there on the sandbar. I actually just swam across this little channel where these guys are sitting over here. Water temperature is pretty, pretty nice for this time of year actually. And it's, uh, we could walk across back over to our kayaks there, but you have to swim this little piece on this very, very tiny tip of a piece of sandbar that's left here. When we were here back on May 30th, we saw a lot of beaver activity and you can see they were frantically trying to do what they do to stop this flow right here knocking trees into it, but those are all gone now it's going into Christmas Tree Island okay we're right on the north end of Christmas Tree Island this was a popular spot for us we've got some pictures I'll post over the top of this video, but it's now rushing through the north end of Christmas Tree Island. And you can see a couple of trees have toppled on the very, very north end there and are laying over and there's some large trees that will now be in jeopardy. But this was really a popular place here. This was the north end. You go to the right down the main channel or you could come down this relatively calm backwater channel that we typically would go down in our kites. Got a lot of pictures down through here. And then we're looking back up north toward the Hesket plant and towards Misty Waters, north of Ponderosa, and all the way up to Hogue Island that way. But this was a very, very popular place. And we can hear the water rushing into the trees here and into the north end. We'll get a little closer and then we'll have to paddle back away from it so we don't get taken into that area there. Yeah, this was an area we had to paddle, oh, you know, because you didn't move that fast. No, and that was a cliff before this. The debris you see piling up in some areas here on the river as we continue going down. We're about midway through Christmas Tree Island. Father's son and his toes. Huh. Father's son and his toes. Yeah. Father's son and Holy Spirit. Here's some homes on the um, Missouri River just up from Bismarck that are doing their best to keep the water at bay. And uh, these are big, beautiful homes uh, on a back channel whose biggest problem before, quite frankly, was trying to figure out a way to keep access to the river because this channel was driving up. And now they're in a fight for their life with groundwater. And you can see with the uh, intrusion of the water coming from underneath and over when it rains, they have to make sure that the water doesn't affect them. Their outbuildings are in water and you can see in the distance a large warehouse fighting the same fight there as well. And this, the water, the Missouri River used to have a very tiny channel here, but the main channel was about a quarter mile in our direction over the tops of these treetops here. Here's another house. Ironically, they, uh, they have a pool uh, in their house. There's the playground. There's another house just to the north of us. And they don't seem to be diked up here at all. They're just kind of letting nature take its course. There's water all the way around this home. It appears to be all the stuff is out of the house. We can see through the windows here. And uh, there's their playground. Uh, we're, we're probably about 12 feet above where the water should be. So there would be a 12 foot drop down to the river here. And the river channel, we're, we're 12 feet above where it should be. And they've, uh, they've, they're not diking the home. So uh, they may be giving up on this house. I don't know. Here's the bladder. Yeah, here's the bladder we can see that they were trying to protect their house with. That's failed. They've got another dike, a secondary dike there, another pool behind that dike. You can hear pumps pumping water out from behind this house here. And uh, we saw their, their jacuzzi on the other side of their dike. 
there's a there's a water you can see the water running out from behind there so they've got groundwater issues over here they've got electricity I can see uh, electricity on over there as they're fighting this this flood fight they've got water coming on both sides at this house here water 12 feet high the river here you can see the tops of these trees over over the water there And you can see the uh, the front end of Meriwether's is completely slumped in. There's water through the 1911 Wilton train depot. The dock where the Lewis and Clark boat used to dock is, is severely damaged as well. And uh, just a question of how much water it can take for how long. This is as high as the river is supposed to get. So uh, it looks like the Meriwether's will stay there. It won't float downstream as some had speculated early on in the, in the flood disaster. But uh, not looking too good right now. We are now. going by the former Lewis and Clark Riverboat dock. There's Meriwether's in water slumping to the west. This is where people used to get onto the dock. And you can see all kinds of debris up against the dock. It's slumped into the water. A lot of damage to this. It's still here, which is surprising, I think, to some people. As we come now under into what was once a popular marina, there would have been, on a July, the first July and Saturday, there would have been boats all up and down here, pontoon boats. This would have been full of pontoon boats. You would have seen boats up and down the river here, and people water skiing and jet skis and parking lots full, and now uh, we're the only ones on the river because uh, simply nobody can take their power boats down here, and very few people have these kinds of vessels. As we go underneath the uh, Grant Marsh Bridge and see uh, the damage from the Meriwether's restaurant now running underneath what is an incredible flow. We'll just let you listen as we go underneath the bridge here. Go, go to the left. Go to the left. This way. Your left. Now, this is this is actually the boat ramp we're coming down where that last light is that light pole right there that was the end of the boat dock right down there yep yeah this is all there's a wall here you can just see the, the top of these two trees is where a the the, the rip wrap is down there somewhere if it's still there and then we're on top of actually the where people would park their boats and then we're just coming out on the bottom of the boat ramp here I like that boil under there. That's awesome. It's funny. You move around, it kind of pushes you. Out. But you don't want to stay there too long. It's swamp you. Are we on the other side of the keel boat? Or that yeah, we're in that dead tree. We're going out of that dead tree down there. There's no current back here, though. We rode the wave, man.